If you've walked down the street within the last few hours, been on a bus or popped into your local shops, then the chances are you've been filmed on CCTV several times. Britain is covered in cameras and some people say it's gone too far. Five News has been looking at the good and bad sides of living in a surveillance society. Today, Catherine Jones has been to meet the critics who say it's bad for Britain. If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. That's what advocates of CCTV say. But sometimes cameras designed to catch criminals can intrude into ordinary people's lives. Rail enthusiast Stephen White enjoys photographing trains. On holiday in Wales, he took these snaps. But in the background was an oil refinery, so his suspicious behaviour ended up reported to police. It was taken through the fence, but it clearly shows that it's just the engine I was taking a picture of. Eventually, this officer pulled him over with blue lights flashing. A police camera scanning car number plates had flagged up he was a wanted man. I'm, I'm not an easily scared person, but to actually have the, the threat that supposedly the police were going to chase us and, and find me and arrest me is quite worrying. To pursue people purely as a because the police can is, is, is quite clearly wrong. One of the biggest questions about CCTV is whether it's worth the money. In the 1990s, three quarters of the Home Office crime prevention budget was spent on cameras. But in London, it's now estimated just one crime is solved for every 1,000 cameras in operation. And CCTV evidence solves only 3% of street robberies. However, it's the growing use of cameras to catch errant motorists that may do most to undermine public faith in the technology. Anil Mohinlal legally parks his car on this private land just off a road monitored by cameras. Three times he's wrongly had an automatically generated parking ticket through the post. It feels as though you're being taken advantage of because they know most people haven't got the energy or the knowledge to go through the appeal processes. So sometimes you might say, well, I might as well pay the £60 rather than go through all this hassle. Privacy campaigners believe surveillance is so much a part of life, our liberties have been seriously eroded. We are allowing the blanket retention of images on a permanent basis of innocent people without their consent. I also think that this is part of our wider kind of surveillance culture where we're fingerprinting children in schools to get their school dinners. It's happening more and more and I think it's worrying that that's the way we're going. So, cameras can make law-abiding people feel intimidated. Traffic enforcement by CCTV means motorists can't easily explain themselves, and it is all hugely expensive. No wonder some people strongly believe our big brother society needs scaling down. So, Cathy, you've shown us the pros and the cons, but is anything going to change? Well, in a word, yes, because the new government is extremely keen on bringing in regulation in this field. And uh, it's already said there'll be something put to the House of Commons in the autumn. Um, potentially, there could be, I gather, some interesting announcements in the next couple of weeks. And whichever side of the fence you fall on on this, that is much needed and long overdue. But I think there'll be something else that really influences um, how CCTV is used in the future. And that is not going to be what MPs say. It's going to be what happens in town halls and in uh, police uh, headquarters across the country as chief constables and local authorities desperately try to slash their budgets. And that's where the axe might fall on CCTV. We shall see, Cathy. Thank you.